Welcome to another video in the data migration playlist. This is the fourth and the last video in the LSMW demo for changing cost center master data. In the last parts, we have seen how to create the project, how to create a recording and then edit it, how to create a source structure and map it to our target structure and how to map the different fields with conversion rules. We have also seen how to create our Excel template and assign it to the project. In the video today, I'm going to proceed with the demo and we are going to see how to create a batch input session and then run it in the foreground and how to change it to run in the background, how to control the batch input session. So if we face errors and we would like to exit the batch input session, there's a special way to do this. If we would like to skip certain records while performing the update, we can also do this. And we are going to see some important errors and how to handle them. As always, remember that you have to follow the playlist in the same sequence that I created. So if you have not seen the previous parts, you need to stop here, go watch them and then come back to continue this video. I'm going to leave you a link to the playlist somewhere here so you can check the playlist. Also, if you would like to test LSMW yourself and check the program that I created or create another program, then you can subscribe to my SAP server access in the link below. I will also be looking forward to your comments to see whether you like this model of videos that I have split one long video into separate smaller videos or would you like that I keep only one long video? Let me know in the comments because I'm planning to follow the same model in the following videos and I really want to know what you think. Now let's proceed with the fourth and last part of our LSMW demo for changing cost center master data. So now we have our target structure. The next step is that SCEP is going to execute the transaction the same way I did in the beginning when I did the recording. And it will go step by step, take the values from the target structure and update them in the screen in the transaction. And we can see this happening in front of us. So now I will create a batch input session. This is how SCEP is going to do the updates. And here very important is to check keep batch input folders. This means what? It means that SCEP is going to keep the history of the batch input session even if the session is successful. Otherwise, once the session is successful, SCEP is going to delete the batch input session. You cannot check the history after this. So check this one. So this way SCEP will always keep the batch input sessions even if they are processed successfully. So this way you can see them in the future to have the history of what happened. And here we can, we have the file name. We don't change this. We have the name of the batch input folder. So, so this one I can change. So let's say cc underscore one underscore ag underscore one again. And we have the user ID and execute. Now one batch input folder with three transactions created. Okay. The last step is to run the batch input session and this is transaction SM35. So if I go here, asterisk. So now here is my, my session name. So I had to insert an asterisk here. So SAP automatically brought this from the program. But then because I changed the name of the batch input session manually, I had to add an asterisk here to see the rest. Or if you know the name, you can insert it. Now this is our batch input session, which is in status created. So it has not been executed yet. Now I will click here, process. And I have different options. I can either process in the foreground, which means I will watch SCEP updating the fields in my place. So SCEP will go to the screen, like if there is a user doing the transaction and it will start updating the fields and I have to press enter whenever any field is update or I can say display errors only. So SCP will go execute and if it finds any errors live, it will just pop up with the error and I can fix it. Or I can say background, which means that SCP will execute everything in the background and I will not be able to know if there are any errors or to correct anything until we are done. I can see the history, but it's done. I will have to repeat the batch input session after repeating, after correcting the errors. So SCP will update any record that is successful and any, any record that has errors will be stopped or skipped. And then I can see in the history what happened and we can correct them and run again and so on. Normally what I do is I start with foreground so I can see the program starting with one or two records to make sure that everything is working fine. Then from inside I switch to display errors only. So SAP will start processing and only shows me the screen once there is an error so I can fix it. So this is what I'm going to do now. So first I will start with process foreground. And then as you see, SCEP opened the KS02 transaction exactly as I did when I did the recording. So we have the controlling area, which is nice. So it came from the fixed value, the cost center. So press enter. And now we have the problem here. You see, the name is empty. So this one was filled when we did the transaction. But it is empty. Why? Because SCEP moved the empty value from our target structure to the screen. So this will cause an error. If I press enter, 
Now we have an error that this field is mandatory. This one, this one, and this one. So what we need to do is we need to tell SCEP that if the field is empty in the source structure, it means that SCEP should skip the field. It should not update with an empty value. It should skip it and leave it as is. To do this, we go back to our field mapping and we choose the checkbox of initial value. Let me show you how we do this. So now, now I'm stuck here, right? If I press enter, it will not move. We are, it's mandatory. So either I need to fill the values manually and then press enter, or I want to cancel. What I want to do now is I want to cancel, exit the batch input session, go correct the mistakes, and then come back. Now, if I try to click on cancel here, what SCP will do is it will skip this record and move to the following record. So now you see we are in call center 2000. It's not going to stop the batch input session. No, it will just jump this record. So this record has an error, fine. It will move to the next one. So it will not end the batch input screen. The way to end it, the only way to end it is to go to system, services, batch input. Then here we have cancel. This is the only way to exit a batch input session. I got to learn this after two years in the SAP career, I think. Before this, I had to cancel, cancel, cancel until I finish all the records to be able to exit. It's really annoying. So this is a very small tip that will help you exit the batch input session. So now I click on cancel and done, we are out. Session overview. So now you see it has a status error. We don't have any successful transactions, so we did not do any updates, which is nice because now I want to redo everything. Now let's go back to LSMW here, and we'll go to define field mapping and conversion rules. Remember the initial value checkbox that we didn't check? So now I'll go again to utilities, auto field mapping, because I want to apply it for all the fields, and I select this one, only if source field is not initial. So now, SAP is going to update the fields only if in the Excel sheet, we don't have an empty value. If we have an empty value, SAP will understand that it needs to skip this, it needs to skip this field, not to update it with empty, okay? So this is very important. That's why I had to show you all of this. It made the video longer, but it's worth it. So now only if source field is not initial. In some cases, by the way, we are doing an update program to update one of the fields with initial value. So some, in some cases it's needed that if in the Excel sheet, the value is empty, we want it to be empty when SAP updates. We want SAP to remove the value from this field in the actual transaction. In this case, for this specific field, we are not going to check this, okay? So now I'm selecting it for everyone. I will click on okay. SAP did mapping for all of them and it did not update anything because I did not check only edit none, also edit none initial target fields. I, before I had only edit initial target fields, so any field that's not mapped yet, and since all the fields are already mapped, SAP didn't do anything. Now I will select also edit none initial target fields. So SAP will redo all the mapping. So now if you check, SAP has updated all of them and added this condition, if not, the field is initial, then do the update. But if the field is initial, then don't do any updates. So this is what we wanted to do. Don't forget that we have a constant for controlling area. So again, I will go to controlling area rule. I will choose back the constant. Okay, G0, okay, we are fine. So now for the controlling area, it's constant. Now, if there is any field that you want to update with initial, so if there is any field that you really want to update with an empty value if the source field is empty, you remove the initial thing. So you click here on the field, you go to rule, and see this, you remove it. Or you just go to the code, you go inside the condition here, and you remove this code manually. You can do, any, you can do either, either of these. So if I remove this condition, so I remove the if part and the end if, SAP is not going to apply this initial field value thing. Now I will save this, go back. So now since we changed the conversion rules, we need to run the data conversion again. We don't need to read the data again. You read the data again only if you change your Excel template or if you change the records in the Excel sheet, which I didn't do. So I did not touch the Excel sheet. So all the records that SAP read are correct. I don't want to change this. What I changed is the conversion rules. So you don't have to go and read the data again. What I need to do now is to convert the data. So go to convert. And I need to convert the data again because I changed the conversion rules. So now execute. 
we have three records converted, go back. Now let's display the converted data. And we will be able to see the difference what happened. So see what SAP did now? It added a slash or a backslash, I'm not sure, in all of the fields that are empty. And this is how SAP understands that it needs to skip these fields, not update them, it will just skip because these fields are empty. Now let's go back and create another batch input session. So the old one is already bad, we cannot use it again. So this one will be underscore two, execute. Now we have another batch input session, run batch input session. So again, I will add the asterisk here to be able to see them here. So this is the new one, status created, and the process. So again, I will start with foreground, so I can see one record, how SAP does the update. We have the controlling area, nice, enter. Now, as you see, SAP did not remove the description or the name or the person responsible or any field that I did not update. It only updated the ones that I filled in the Excel sheet, which is what I want. I will press on enter. SAP moved to the following screen. So these are the checkboxes we wanted. So plan revenues are selected, plan primary costs are selected. This is exactly what we want. Now I will press enter. So SAP saved and moved to the next one. So this is the second record for cost center 2000. Now what I want to do is I want to switch to error only mode. So I don't want to keep pressing enter, enter, enter. I want to go away and SAP will show me only if there is an error. So what I will do is I will go to system, batch input or service, uh, services, batch input. And here we have display errors only. This is very useful because before we used to press enter, enter, enter sometimes. And in many cases, actually, when there are warning messages that keep appearing when you are creating the master data, SCAP will keep showing you the warning message as an error, not an error, but it, you have to press enter to, to bypass the warning messages. And then in this case, you have to just keep pressing enter or you find any heavy object. And we used to be very creative with this. So you find your phone or you put a, a bottle of water or something, anything, and you stick it on the enter button so it keeps pressing enter automatically. This is what we used to do. And we, we are still doing it until now, by the way, sometimes. So now I will click on display errors only. And done. So the batch input session completed, which means that SAP did not find any errors. This is why I did not receive anything. Now, if I go to session overview, now we have our session here. And we have three, so the successful records are three. The transactions are three. I can also display the log. So here we have this log. And if I click here, click on display, this is what happens. So we have three transactions read, three transactions processed. We don't have anything deleted or anything. So this is exactly what we want. And this is it. Now we have updated our cost center master data. And I will go back to LSMW just to give a quick overview on what we did. So first we created the project, sub-project and object. And then we followed the steps one by one, except the step number six for defined fixed values because I didn't need to use it. So we defined the attributes, source structure, source fields, then the relations where we connected the source structure to the target structure, then the field mapping where we connected the field of the source structure to the fields of the target structure with the conversion rules. And then we specified the files that we are going to upload, assign the files to the source structure, read the data into the source structure, then converted them into the target structure, and then created a batch input session that SAP used to update the master data based on the value in the target structure. And also now you understand how to skip fields that have initial value or update them if you want. You also understand how we can change the code in the conversion rule. And this is it. Now you understand how to create your own LSMW upload project and how to do the different steps. Also, you know how to handle the most common errors. Let me know if you want me to demonstrate another master data object or transaction data in the comments and I would do. Or also let me know if you think this is enough and you already understand the idea well and I should proceed to another topic, let me know in the comments. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, check the channel membership to get access to the member exclusive videos and the configuration documents. Also check the SAP server access subscription if you would like to join me in this SAP server. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.